Hey guys, Monster Michael Todd here, and I'm going to give you guys a little info on Dennis and Plinkoff. First, hit subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Dennis, to me, is probably the most powerful man to ever step up to an arm wrestling table. He truly is one of the greatest. I think the first time I saw him might have been 2007 in a vendetta against Andre Pushkar left-handed. This guy just came out of nowhere. Pushkar was an animal, and he was killing him, like with no technique at all, just like nodding his head at him and then pulling him back across the table. So yeah, I was impressed from the very first time I saw Dennis and Plinkoff. As far as Dennis goes, I was watching him just run through people. And then John Brzezink, when they finally pulled, John Brzezink got him at Zlati. So then next year, I was pulling Jan Inchescu, and Dennis was pulling John Brzezink at the Vendetta in Vegas. And watching what John was able to do impressed me. But then round six, I saw Dennis, John gave him a little bit, and Dennis got him. And then I realized, holy crap, if this guy learns technique and learns how to arm wrestle, he's truly gonna be a threat. Probably the most intimidating thing about Dennis was his freaking hands. I remember in Vegas when he was pulling John Brzezink, that dude's hands were enormous. Hell, he was wearing sandals and his freaking toes were huge. Like his big toe had to be like that big. I was like, holy shit, I don't know what to do with this guy if I ever arm wrestling. So at the 2011 Arnold Classic, Dennis and Plinkoff and I were in the same weight class. We were in the 199 plus. Looked at the brackets, it's gonna be a hard road. A lot of people see that match with me and Dennis and they think, oh, well, he had this hard match with Richard Lufkies first. That's why Michael was able to beat him. Actually, that match with Richard was round two. He had a round three match where he just flashed his guy. My round three match was me and Tim Bresnan, which I had to stop Tim's hit He's trying to come into a press. He catches a foul. I have to stop Tim's hit again. Same thing. Oh, I've seen Michael come back from that position many times, and Tim knows that. And then round four, undefeated A side, is me and Dennis. So there's a little history on that. You know, yeah, he pulled a hard match with, with Richard Lovekies, but that was two matches prior. I had pulled a hard match with Tim Bresnan the match prior. So on that day, uh, the first time we gripped up, slip, strap, I got the stop and I'm like, holy crap, dude, I'm gonna beat this guy. You know, I just knew that once I stopped him, I had it. Uh, ended up coming into transition to press and he elbow fouls. The next time I'm setting up, and I'm looking right at that pad. I'm about to shoulder press this fool, right? Ready, go, boom. Uh-oh, <laughs> dude yanked me back across the table, but I got to stop. You got Travis Bajan over there. Yes, he's a Michael Todd fan. Over there screaming that I'm the greatest. You're gonna win, you're gonna win. And I hold, I hold, I hold. I get behind it, I get a bump, get a bump. Transition for the press. Whoa, USA, baby. But uh, I go home that night and I, I'm watching the footage, right? And I'm seeing how hard this dude's cracking on me, you know? I'm like, ooh, my arm's almost straight. Oh, that hurts. So I was a little intimidated the next day when he came back up there. He got on me. All I had to do was one win. I'd never won the Arnold at this point. So I was one win and I just couldn't get it, man. He, he got me twice. So after our match in 2011, um, you know, I had my match with Devin, I went on Went on a, an awesome winning streak. You know, I beat Andre Pushkar January 2012 and just kept winning, kept winning. So at this point, I'm ranked number two. Dennis is ranked number one. I am trying my hardest to find someone to get me this match for the overall number in the world because I felt confident that I could win, right? It was a very important match for me, a, a chance for me to solidify myself as the number one overall on the planet, and we couldn't make it happen. There was, there was $25,000 offered. There was just conflicts between different leagues. I couldn't get it to happen, and I tried, but unfortunately, it, it never came to fruition. So obviously, Dennis and Plickoff was a household name around here, and I was telling Rebecca about him, and she thought, oh, it's super cool. He's this, he's, this guy's a monster, he's so big. And you know, not knowing him, never meeting him, you didn't know what to expect. We happened to be in Germany at the FIBO Fitness Expo, and we knew that Dennis was there. And we're walking through the crowd, and you see Dennis, Michael, Michael, you know, and I come over there and, you know, 
we give her a hug and introducing Rebecca. He introduces to his girl. He's giving us a bunch of free stuff. We get on the table. Rebecca's afterwards. She goes, oh my God, that was so amazing. You guys are, have such good camaraderie and it's so close. So it was always a good respect between the two of us. Um, truly a good friend. So during this time, I had signed a contract with the UAL. And then PAL comes to, to America and they base out of Las Vegas. So I'm, I'm talking to Igor and, and I'm talking to Robert. Hey, are you cool with me getting involved in some of this stuff? And and after several negotiations, they're like, yeah, we'll let you do a one-off for the show. And I end up doing the match, uh, supposed to be against Andre Pushkar for the number one in the world. He gets injured, so then I end up pulling Dimitri Trubin. And as you guys know, I end up losing four to two. So now they start talking about Dennis having a comeback and how about I pulled Dennis in Vegas. I'm like, absolutely, let's do it. I was excited about it, but it didn't have the same allure. It wasn't for the overall number in the world. Dennis was not number one anymore. He had been gone for a couple of years. And so I didn't have that same excitement. I didn't have, winning the match would have been great, but it wouldn't have made me the undisputed overall number in the world. So man, I'm training, but I'm not like in training mode. You know, I'm chilling with Rebecca. I'm happily married. We're, I'm laying in bed, I'm watching TV. I get up and I go do my workout, I come back in. I just don't know for real that it's, that it's, that it's really actually gonna happen. And like two weeks out, okay guys, it's happening. You're pulling Dennis in July. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so I gotta start training for real. I've got like, what is that, a week to really get focused? And then I go online and I see these crazy heavy curls he's doing. I mean, 300 plus pound curls and his arms look like they're about to explode. Definitely intimidated. Obviously, he draws attention wherever he goes because he looks like an accommodation of the Incredible Hulk and Shrek, right? This dude's massive. But he's such a likable dude, he's super charismatic. I think he had this little fisherman hat on and flip flops at the press conference when we first met him in Vegas. We talked back and forth, great to see you, whatever, whatever. I look at Rebecca, I'm like, oh shit, this guy's enormous. Oh, hell. You know, what did I sign up for? This guy is going to run right through me. I'm not even going to be close. So, yeah, I, I was, I had already, I'd already been beat mentally. Um, primarily because I didn't, it's not that I didn't take the match seriously. I just didn't know that the, the match was for real. So I didn't have that, that drive, that focus. And with it not being for the overall number in the world, it just didn't have that same, I just didn't have that same passion. In hindsight, I wish I would have, right? Because that would have been a really good win. And uh, day of the event, we get up there, ready, go, slip, get the strap. Oh, yeah, I'm in this match, right? Like, I'm legit in the match. I did not think I was going to be. They called a parallel pin, which I still don't think was a pin. Round two, I get, I come back off the thing. I tell Rebecca, okay, I, honey, it's cool. I'm good. Round two, we get in there, we get in there. I make an early transition, and he capitalizes and pins me. So now I'm down 2-0. All right, round three happens. This is this is in it. I got the match stopped. I'm gonna do it. I transition the press. I get the win. At this point, I should sweep this dude. The rest of the matches. Well, I'd started in round three with a bent wrist press, and I almost pinned him. Slip, go the strap. Round four, I'm like, I'm gonna set up for that bent wrist press again since I almost pinned him, and I feel him countering me with side pressure into the palm of my hand, knowing that that counters my bent wrist press. But I'm like, ah, oh, I think I'm fast enough. Hit, boom, pin. Ah, oh, shit. Now I'm down three to one. Oh, I just totally screwed up. So then I get the win in round five. So now we're three to two. Round six is a war. And I'm getting two elbow fouls. I still did not see that second elbow foul. I have huge respect for Denison Plinkoff. To be honest, I would love that rematch. Like I said, I feel like I feel like I beat myself in that match. He has a 6-3 win on me. 6-3 winning record. If I could come in this thing, stop him round one, round two, make it four to two, that wouldn't be good because he'd still be eight to seven. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> make it five to one. If I could win five to one, then that would be what? Seven to Seven shit, that'd be a tie. I got a sweet 6-0 sweep him, apparently. But yeah, that'd be an awesome match to have. Of course, I've been following Dennis, and he's going through some health issues right now. Him and his family definitely in our prayers. I, I hope and pray 
that he is able to battle through this and come back and be in top form and uh, show the world that he belongs on that main stage. I would love that match once he's ready. And uh, until then, God bless, brother. Ha, 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 ha.